Hey guys, my name is Hike and this is going to be a review of the Google Pixel 2 XL. This is going to be a general review as I'm not going to be focusing on uh, every single technical aspect of this phone. As I'm sure there are plenty of other reviews already available covering those. Today I'm going to be sharing my experience with Pixel 2 XL after using it as my daily driver for 7 months already. Despite being surrounded by controversy since its release in November 2017, the Pixel 2 XL remains my favorite Android phone on the market right now. This is true even when considering its issues with the display, speaker and some unit shipping without an operating system on board. And the fact that there has been released some new flagships like Samsung's Galaxy S9, LG 7 and OnePlus 6. To Google's credit, numerous patches have been pushed out to fix the majority of concerns, notably for the display. The LG OLED panel on the Pixel 2 XL came in with for much criticism, and I agree with it, wasn't very good. However, a new vivid color mode addresses most of the issues. In the first Pixel, Google used an OLED display from Samsung and it was good enough for the time. But as the time passes, technology progresses as well, and this year Samsung came up with stunning AMOLED panels, which obviously went straight to their own latest flagships, which are putting to shame every single display in the mobile industry right now, including the one on Pixel 2 XL. So comparing the Pixel's display to Samsung's panels is definitely not fair, as nothing compares to them. It isn't bad, but simply isn't in the same league as the panels manufactured by Samsung this year. The only real problem I had with this display was the muted color profile, which as the Google described, are true to life, uh, which manufacturers should already understand by now that almost no one cares about this on their mobile phones. Most of the people want warm and juicy colors to admire on their phones. And that is exactly what Google provided with their vivid color profile. But right after the numerous complaints from the users. And this begs the question, would there be a controversy around the Pixel 2 XL's display if Google were to release the phone with the vivid mode already enabled and simply leave an option to switch to sRGB if anyone needs it? I think not. The camera on this device is the best there is capturing fantastic pictures in varying conditions. There isn't another phone around that takes consistently superb shots like this. And Google's pictures processing remains the best. Because as I always say, you can do only so much in regards of a camera hardware in a slim modern smartphone, as a good camera is almost synonymous with a big sensor size to collect a lot of lights and a big lens. Thus, the future of mobile photography is definitely in advanced software processing, which Google does a great job with right now. The software is definitely its high point on Pixel 2 devices, as it always is on phones made by Google. Not only it was the first headset to rock the Android Oreo, but you'll be first in line for whenever Android P comes out. In fact, it is already available as beta release, for which you can sign up with any of the available Pixel devices, including several others from other manufacturers like Essential Phone, OnePlus 6, and Sony Xperia XZ2, thanks to the pro project trouble implemented by Google. The current developer preview version is the fourth one, and at this point it is very stable and it can be considered as a daily driver material However, if you are still in doubt whether it's worth the risk of flashing beta software, not to worry as uh, the stable version of the Android P will be out sometime in this August. On the Pixel 2 XL software, there are no ugly skins or useless features. They're just Android in a way Google intended it. And this is not only aesthetically pleasing, but it also shows in other aspects, like smooth performance and well-optimized battery life. The battery life is holding steady at just over a day and a half for me. 
Google includes a fast charging in a box. This does an excellent job to quickly juice up the phone. The wireless charging, though, would have been a nice to have, is absolutely a non-issue as I much prefer to have a metal unibody phone as opposed to all glass. Which seems like it's not going to be the case with the upcoming Pixel 3 as some leaks already showed that it might be made of out of glass, presumably with wireless charging. To be honest, I really don't understand why so many manufacturers are making their new phones out of glass, as it is heavier, more fragile, slippery, and a fingerprint magnet. I watch all these tech YouTubers praising the new wave of glass phones in their reviews, and then in the end, they are like, but of course I'm going to slap a D-brand skin to add grippiness, avoid fingerprints, and to, and to avoid scratches. So then what's the point of having a glass if from the first day on you are going to slap a D-brand skin and never see that glass again? The wireless charging? And why would you ever use a wireless charging when you can pop the fast charger in and charge it nearly full in less than an hour? Wireless charging is a very inefficient technology, in this time of technological development that is, as it is very slow and wastes a lot of energy. Only 60-70% to 70 of the actual energy reaches to your device during the charging process. The rest dissipates as heat, which is very wasteful in terms of energy economy and harmful for your battery. Now let's talk about the design of this phone. Although the Google Pixel 2 XL more closely follows the recent trend of slim bezels and 18 to 9 aspect ratio displays, as opposed to its little brother, the Pixel 2, it doesn't really fit into bezel-less category of phones, like LG G7, iPhone 10, Galaxy S9, OnePlus 6. Unlike those devices, there is still a prominent bezel around its sides. It makes the Pixel 2 XL feel big and more comparable to Galaxy Note 8 in terms of size. But at least the bezels serve a purpose on Pixel 2 XL. Above and below the display see decent sounding front facing stereo speakers. Plus, Google has added these pressure sensitive edges that, that will invoke the assistant with a squeeze of the sides. The back of the Pixel 2 XL is a mixture of glass and aluminium, although the glass features only sparingly in a shade covering the camera and flash. The aluminium is covered in a coating which is slightly textured. It's, a, it's an excellent finish that goes some way to add grip which was lacking on the original Pixel devices. My phone is the all black model, which I really like as I usually like my gadgets in matte black. One thing I would have liked to see is an extra heat of color on the power button, just like the white model of the Pixel 2 XL, which adds fun element to the phone. Like most flagship headsets worth their price tags this year, the Pixel 2 XL is IP67 rated for water resistance. This means you can submerge the phone in one meter of water for about half an hour without any resulting damage which I did not test personally, but it gives me a peace of mind to have uh, my phone in a bathroom playing music while I'm taking a shower and knowing that splash of water won't be damaging it anytime soon. In the Pixel 2 XL, Google has also followed the trend to remove the headphone jack, which I can only assume it was for waterproofing pur purposes. However, it wasn't such a big deal for me personally, as prior to this for more than a year, I have been using exclusively Bluetooth earbuds by Jaybird as I was sick and tired of tangled wires and inconvenience of carrying the phone around with me in a gym. With Bluetooth earbuds I would simply lay the phone on the coffee table at the gym and go on with my workout, wire and phone free. If you haven't seen my review of the Jaybird X3 Bluetooth earbuds, I'll leave it in the description of this video. <laughs> The USB-C to 3.5mm port dongle which comes in a box with Pixel is a good backup to have. However, until now, I have never even used it. And that's how much I do not care about not having a 3.5mm headphone jack. Obviously, priorities and needs are different from person to person and I'm simply presenting you my experience. 
So in the end, this might not be the best Android phone available in every area, but the Google Pixel 2 XL is the one I would buy. It has a stunning camera, the best version of Android available at any time, sturdy metallic build, and I love the texture Google has put over the metal bag, and I even like the glass patch at the top, as I believe it's a great balance between having a metallic phone and a great radio reception quality, as the radio waves tend not to travel well through metal. The Samsung's Galaxy S9 and LG G7 both have more features, and OnePlus 6 is cheaper, but Google Pixel 2 XL shines when you actually use it. Take a picture with it and you'll forgive the lack of headphone jack or the odd sized bezels. This is it guys, hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any comments or recommendations, please leave them in the comment section below, as I'm very active there. Also, if you have any questions regarding the Pixel 2 XL, which I did not cover in this video, Ask me and I'll get back to you shortly in a comment section. Have a great day and see you in my next video.